Hello, this is Ralph Rio. I'm with ARC Advisor Group. Now we're going to talk about surfetization, uh, the adoption and associated maturity model to uh, assess progress. Uh, at first, we're going to talk about the uh, overall business process so uh, one could understand that the total scope is surfetization. Uh, we'll discuss the path to surfetization for OEMs, uh, the maturity model to assess progress, and then we'll get into the benefits for both the uh, end user as well as the OEM. Uh, let me let me just first kind of capture what servitization is. Uh, in its essence, it uh, replaces that single transaction associated with the delivery of a product to an end user to a continuous service, a subscription service that vastly improves the customer experience throughout the entire life cycle of the asset. Um, many software suppliers, uh, just for an analogy for you, have already moved from a perpetual license a business model where everyone's focused on that initial sale to a subscription service uh, commonly called software as a service or SAAS. Uh, in a similar model, the business model for equipment suppliers is just starting to move to equipment as a service. Uh, elevators, farming equipment are a couple of industries that move to this model. Uh, this servitization has characteristics of bundling, uh, together, the, the renting, support, uh, and maintenance of, a, of an asset, uh, along with a service level agreement. Uh, and the objective is to provide vastly improved user outcomes. So uh, uh, let's just talk about the business process a little bit. Uh, for the typical OEM that sells through dealers, uh, the associated business process can be quite complex. Uh, here is an example where we have equipment with the customers. Uh, there is a need to do some uh, IoT uh, uh, analytics cloud so you can do some predictive maintenance. Uh, there are flags when things start going bad to the uh, fuel service management system for the planner. Um, that planner starts to do some some triage when the alerts come in and the ones that are valid problems uh, get turned into work orders. Uh, we highly recommend those work orders be managed on a mobile device so that uh, uh, not only is it real time, the status of the work order real time, but uh, because the data is entered by the technician as they do the work, uh, Data quality is very high, uh, particularly when compared to uh, when the technician writes on a work order, paper work order, and that work order goes to a data entry clerk for data entry. Uh, and with this higher data quality, the work order management system, fuel service management system, starts to become a trusted planning tool and status determination tool. Uh, uh, and as a result, becomes a proactive business management uh, tool by the management and the, the technicians. Uh, so this overall process uh, starts with the equipment, monitoring, uh, typically monitoring just a, a few data points. So I tend to call this small data, where uh, maybe 5, 10, 15 data values for that particular equipment goes up to a cloud uh, uh, analytics predictive maintenance application and that small data is used to assess the health of the equipment uh, which generates the flags to the planner uh, which then decides which ones goes into a work order and the technician executes that work order whether it be uh, uh, real maintenance uh, repairs or uh, perhaps preventative maintenance or maybe just an inspection uh, to assess the condition of the uh, the equipment. Now, why did this become complex? You know, uh, one, the technology now that I've talked about is been around for a while and fairly proven. So at this juncture, the technology itself is not uh, is proven and not that complex uh, or not that difficult to implement. Uh, what starts to make this complex is the 
the fact that this goes through three different business entities, from the owner to the OEM uh, to the dealer or service provider. Uh, and it requires uh, business agreements among those entities uh, that, that benefit all parties. So uh, uh, this can't become a situation where all the benefits go to the OEM and the costs go to the dealer. Uh, we recognize in this situation that the OEM usually is the uh, uh, selling the uh, service and as a result getting the revenue. Uh, they are certainly providing the the cloud applications that assess the healthy equipment and generate the alerts. And typically the field service uh, planner, uh, the call center is part of the OEM. But at some point there is handoff to the dealer. They may have their own field service management system uh, and the dealer manages their uh, technicians who deliver the service. So uh, there needs between needs to be between the OEM and the dealer a an agreement that benefits both parties. The dealer gets compensated for their their the work that they perform. Uh, the OEM engages with the uh, owners of the equipment to provide the uh, to uh, sell the service, the subscription, uh, and it needs to be an agreement that generates all part uh, that benefits all parties. And this, as a result, can get fairly complex. So uh, uh, the biggest issue is is those agreements that go across uh, this entire business process. Now, uh, let's just talk a little bit about the path to uh, servitization. Uh, typically, uh, tr on the left-hand side, the, uh, the OEMs have concentrated on product design, manufacturing, uh, while leaving service to the to the dealers in the dis in their distribution channel, uh, this force fosters a culture that uh, for the OEM is focused on internal business processes and internal KPIs, uh, service delivery, and the quality of that service obviously varies among the dealers and the different dealers' capabilities and their their interests in providing services. As a result, the customer experience and, and brand management are not in the control of the OEM. Brand management is in the hands of each dealer. Now, uh, field service provides the technicians and the parts needed to maintain that equipment. Uh, the local technicians who call on that customer uh, to make the repair uh, obviously work for the dealer. Thus, the OEM's business processes uh, must change to include the dealers uh, to get to a more field service capability. Uh, after well-functioning field service business processes are in place, the OEM can now move on to servitization. Here, the business outcomes become much more user-focused to sure renewals. And the, the uh, servitization it is really a business transformation where the OEM has much more outside in user experience focused business processes and KPIs. Now, let's just talk about this maturity model a little bit. Uh, a maturity model provides a framework to evaluate progress along a really important strategic initiative. Uh, this particular model helps organizations recognize where they are along that path uh, towards a successful servitization. Uh, huge differences exist between traditional manufacturing uh, at the lower levels and uh, the one that sells performance at the higher levels. A, a maturity model helps an organization avoid misalignment and, and you know, perhaps self-destruction. Uh, at the lower levels of the maturity model are organizations that optimize internal processes for development, production, uh, supply chain management, and, and re reactively support their installed base products. At the higher levels, uh, the middle 
the business model evolves into owning and maintaining the equipment with proactive customer support processes and customer satisfaction centric KPIs. A firm that moves up the maturity model, uh, the asset ownership transitions from the end user to the OEM. And at these higher levels of maturity, the uh, IoT and digital twins uh, of the physical equipment become essential. Uh, we see at the second uh, level there, uptime assurance, uh, usually the digital twin is focused around the equipment to assure reliability and uptime. Uh, at the top level, the uh, outcome insurance, the uh, a digital twin starts to include the user's application and operating performance uh, to assure more more outcomes that the end user wants. Now, let's uh, start to transition to benefits. Um, essentially, the user gets the, the benefits, the, the outcomes that they want as benefits. So we have a much more improved overall customer experience where at, at least there's a higher reliability with near zero unplanned downtime. That's due to the predictive maintenance and the proactive repairs done by the, the OEM. With, with predictive maintenance, the repair is done before the equipment uh, fails for near zero unplanned downtime. Uh, this uh, remote monitoring uh, also starts to improve, in, include the operating performance of the equipment uh, to assure high un uh, outcomes for the end user. Now, over at the OEM, uh, the OEM has the incentive to keep that customer happy uh, well after the close of the sale to get the uh, uh, renewal of the subscription. So uh, the OEM gets new sources of, of revenue, uh, much higher revenue, and repeat sales. Uh, and because these are repeat sales, they have lower customer acquisition costs. Um, the stability of the revenue is becomes a much easier business to manage. You get the renewals, there's constant uh, subscription income, even during uh, good times and bad times. Uh, the subscription is sustained because the uh, uh, end user needs to operate that piece of equipment to get the outcomes they need. Now, uh, the financial community recognized the, the, the value of these improved revenue streams. Uh, as with software companies who have implemented software as a service, the, the uh, user, I'm sorry, the financial community typically values these companies at a higher uh, price to earnings ratio. Uh, we see this also happening with the uh, OEMs have transitioned to equipment as a service uh, the, with the more consistent revenue streams, you know, rather than spikes that occur when the economy is, is running very well and then troughs when uh, things are not going so well. Uh, well, we see the business much easier to manage, uh, the financial community rewarding that with higher price to earnings ratios. Uh, this results in uh, higher prices for the stock, higher shareholder value. This higher shareholder value obviously is very beneficial to the C-suite. It plays very well into their key performance indicators, KPIs. And uh, as a result, uh, this business model becomes very highly valued by the C-suite and the board of directors and the shareholders. Um, we, we, ARC has written a report about this. Uh, I'm the author. If you'd like to get a report around the improved uh, business outcomes and how you move over to equipment as a service, I'd be delighted to send that to you. My email is in the lower right hand corner there. Please send me an email and I'd be happy to reply. Uh, with a copy of this report. Also, if you have any questions, uh, I'd be delighted to get those questions and, and reply back to you. Again, uh, please use that email on the lower right-hand corner to contact me either with questions or for a copy of the report.
Uh, thank you for listening.